Picture the four types of us, roaming about in the shape of a diamond, man, woman, boy and girl, traversing the endless curves of various hillsides. I dare admit we soon found ourselves somewhat lost. There is a certain hypnotic magnetism behind certain landscapes, wherein one can become so enveloped in the natural beauty of things that one forgets all else. I believe that is where we found ourselves, in frame of mind as well as physically. If I had not dropped the document adorned with our mission's parameters, I might not have been reminded of a certain rendezvous at sea. This thought prompted another. Where on earth was this ocean we were to find? Only when utilizing a bit of our newfound powers, per the parameters set forth by the Unlimited Society, which we were now a part of, were we able to hear an unseen ocean, which could have meant the location was within a few footsteps or thousands of miles away. For hearing augmented through unlimited society parameters of power was far beyond common or even exceptional hearing. Only through time and usage of such powers could one be assured that a breeze whispering past one's own ear was as close as a butterfly upon the shoulder as opposed perhaps to hearing the wind that weaves endlessly atop the uppermost regions of a distant Mount Everest. Being as it was our first mission, I felt that retreating backwards to House Hartwood for direction would most likely prompt a lack of confidence from our new associates. At least that was what I believed at the time. Therefore we used the ever simple, ever powerful asking procedure. We asked everything and yet nothing at all for the perfect guide or guides to get us to our seaside destination as well as the ability to fund all matters relative to our potential success. The second part of such being a procedure that involves the art of letting go for a while. We had found the best way to achieve this was through counting appreciations, traditionally about ten, perhaps on fingers. I recall us beginning a tenfold recital of our appreciations like so. 1. I appreciate the natural beauty that surrounds us. 2. I appreciate the epic wealth filling our pockets, wallets and purses. 3. I appreciate the supernatural powers within our voices and the capacity for good contained within and emanating forth from them in all directions. 4. I appreciate the glorious health filling our lungs with each inward breath. Five. I appreciate the beautiful lady and the two horses emerging from the mist and smiling at us, sincerely. A quadraphonic utterance of all of our voices rang out in a state of pleasant bewilderment. Lady and two horses. Had our guides arrived as requested so soon? Before we could ponder long, words had broken our silent thoughts, yet they were not ours, they were hers. You will not attain the shores of the unseen sea with common eyes. Only good and true hearts can serve as navigators to such a place for many a good reason, she said with a smile. Then the horses, yes I said the horses, spoke. We have been there before. We will go there again. We will never take a rider there, but we will escort our friends. The lady then continued. What do you see when you look within the mirror of your wishes? We were pleased and a bit surprised by the eloquence and importance of our response to her. As one voice completed a phrase, another came forth to compliment and complete the previous, as if our individual thoughts as man, woman, boy and girl were in one accord as the voice of a glorious higher power we said. I wish to expand the greater good so that the seams of the unlimited realm give way at least a measure, so that all whom pursue peaceful endeavors of any form can attain such with miraculous results. The lady's response to this was as follows. Well then, with such good thoughts present within, turn, turn and see the unseen sea. And with the slightest shift in our own perspectives, the disguise of frustration was shed and the blessing materialized before us. The ocean, which was once only thought to be an imagined sound, was within our full view. The two horses broke towards the sea upon a natural promenade set in place well previous by the hammering of many hooves and perhaps a few footsteps. 
Memories of such a wondrous time and place abound to be sure, to the extent that one would think the miracles and supernatural wonders would take all priorities upon recall of such a symphony of events. However, it is odd. What I remember first and foremost about that day was the promenade at sea. A wealthy, shining ocean. Smiles. Friends. Feeling good. Strange. 